Thank you everyone for attending this webinar. In this session, I will talk about the generation and application of anti-idiotype antibody in therapeutic antibody development. During this presentation, I will first give an overview of the application of anti-idiotype antibody during preclinical and clinical study. Then, I will go over the general strategy of anti-ID generation. And lastly, we will discuss some of the technical challenges in detail during the process. Here is a roadmap recommended by FDA regarding the development of a therapeutic antibody. PK and ADA analysis are considered as the most crucial part throughout the whole preclinical and the clinical study. So what is PK and ADA? To put it in a simple word, PK is to measure the antibody drug level in testing samples, while ADA is to measure anti-drug antibody and a neutralizing antibody in testing samples. So how is PK achieved? Mass spec is widely used for the measurement of the small molecule drugs. However, antibody drug is totally a different story. Human serum contains 5 to 10 mg per milliliter of IgG, while the regular level of antibody drug requires a sensitivity of a nanogram per milliliter range. As a result, this assay must be able to pick up the signal of an antibody drug among a million fold excess of similar molecules. Typically, Immune-based ligand binding assay, such as ELISA through drug target or anti-ID, is preferred. Regarding the immunogenicity study, due to the size of some clinical trials and the importance of testing patient samples at several time points, the FDA recommends a multidisciplinary approach. A rapid screening assay should be used initially, and any sample testing positive should then undergo a confirmatory assay, such as ligand or antigen competition assay. It is up to review experts to evaluate the sensitivity and the specificity of the assay itself and the characterization of immunogenicity. For example, whether anti-drug antibody neutralized the activity of the product. Clinical reviews must consider whether the immune response alters the serum levels of the product, affect the clinical safety and efficacy, or both. Several aspects of immunogenicity assay development include high sensitivity and the ability to detect all isotypes. Other considerations include the ability of the control used to evaluate the assay, as well as effects of the matrix used to perform the assay. Rabbit or monkey will be recommended as host animals. In immunogenicity assay development, assay validation is a key step. Detection of anti-ID antibody is the most important assay validation for immunogenicity. Negative control usually includes a pool of serum from five to 10 non-exposed individuals. There are several assay formats for measuring immunogenicity, each having distinct pros and cons. Bridging ELISAs and the radioimmune precipitation assays are sensitive, inexpensive, and typically requires basic laboratory equipment. However, they may not be able to detect early immune response and can be influenced by high level of circulating drugs. Conversely, SPR is preferred method for detecting early immune responses and has antibody characterization capabilities. Its utility, however, is hampered due to the expensive equipment required and high false positive rate compared to other formats. Finally, 
Electrochemiluminescence assays have the advantage of the sensitivity, but may lack the ability to detect rapidly dissociating antibodies. Thus, assay choice depends largely on the stage of drug development and the access to necessary equipment. Regardless of the method selected, positive control of or reference anybody is needed for appropriate immunogenicity measurements. Anti-idiotype antibody could serve this purpose. Purified anti-IDs can be spiked into the matrix selected for screening assay and used as a reference standard. So what is anti-idiotype antibody? To put it in a simple word, it is an antibody that is able to specifically recognize antibody drug through the variable region. This specificity makes it a perfect tool to measure antibody drug, and its resemblance to anti-drug antibody makes it a good reference for measurement of immunogenicity. Based on the recognition interface on the drug, anti-ID can be further categorized as antigen blocking, non-blocking, or complex specific. When the anti-ID binds to the drug through the CDR region, it will compete against the drug target and only binds to free drug. If the anti-ID binds to the drug through the neighboring region of the CDR, mainly the framework of the variable region, it won't compete against the drug target, and as a result, it can recognize both bound drug and free drug. If an anti-ID only binds to the drug target complex, it will only recognize bound drug. Generally speaking, the preclinical development of the therapeutic antibody includes roughly 12 to 15 months of a lead discovery and another 15 to 18 months of a CMC process development. It is better to give a six to nine months ahead of the time for the generation of anti-ID and corresponding assay development, which means you may need to consider starting this work as early as the stable cell line generation stage. Next, I will go over the general strategy of raising anti-idiotype antibody. Currently, the major platforms for antibody generation includes hybridoma, phage display, and a single B-cell cloning. Hybridoma is probably the most popular method due to its cost efficiency and flexibility. For monoclonal anti-ID antibody, we recommend to start with mouse immunization, followed by fusion screening and subcloning. Monoclonal hybridoma will be scaled up for antibody purification. For polyclonal anti-ID antibody, rabbit or goat are preferred for immunization, followed by antigen affinity purification and cross-absorption with isotype control. With all these options, we recommend it to choose a suitable strategy based on the final application. Mouse and rabbit monoclonal anti-ID are suitable for preclinical PK study, while rabbit polyclonal is only acceptable for early stage pilot PK study, and ideal for ADA study. The detection sensitivity of a rabbit monoclonal antibody is generally better than the mouse MAB, but mouse version is typically enough for the purpose of detection since the dose of antibody drug is usually higher than the small molecule drugs. Over the last decades, more and more non-traditional format of antibody drugs appears on the market, and the strategies of raising anti-ID against these newcomers are also different. The key is still to raise the anti-ID against the variable region. Taking the antibody drug conjugate ADC as an example, 
If you want to detect intact drug, we recommend to use anti-ID against the small molecule, coupled with anti-ID against the antibody carrier. But if you want to measure the level of the antibody carrier, no matter whether it is intact or not, anti-ID against the antibody carrier will do the job. If you are only measuring the level of a small molecule, LCMS is a better way. Similarly, for the case of a bispecific antibody, if you want to detect intact molecule, we recommend to use an anti-ID against one of the monospecific units paired with another anti-ID specific to the other monospecific unit. But if you just want to know either one of the units, anti-ID against either unit is enough. After obtaining good anti-ID monoclonal antibody, assay development with suitable formats will directly affect the outcome of a PK study. Anti-ID capture ELISA and sandwich ELISA are probably the most popular formats commonly used in this assay. By capturing the drug with anti-ID and the detection through anti-human IgG antibody, Capture ELISA is able to achieve pretty good sensitivity within relatively low cost and a timeline. However, using the anti-human IgG antibody commonly leads to issues like high background and less than ideal specificity. On the contrary, sandwich ELISA with a pair of anti-ID that can associate with the drug simultaneously is able to achieve better specificity, sensitivity, but may come with a higher cost. This is a list of typical parameters for PKSE kit, including sensitivity, detection range, precision, recovery rates, and expiration date. All reagents required for this assay are included in the kit, and the test takes about two hours. Usually, the desired range of sensitivity for antibody drug is from 1 to 100 nanogram per milliliter. The detection range is an optimal window of concentration in which the measurement can be done in a most accurate way. The precision and the recovery rates are parameters of accuracy. The expiration day is determined by high temperature accelerated degradation test. In terms of ADA study, there are also two different formats. Direct binding ELISA is easy to develop, but anti-human IgG antibody will bring through to non-specific noise. Alternatively, bridging ELISA employ the drug as capture and the detection antibody to achieve better specificity and the sensitivity. Similar to the PK kit, ADA assay parameters also include sensitivity, detection range, precision, recovery rates, and expiration date. Now, for the last part, we will discuss some of the technical challenges during generation of anti-idiotype antibody. First of all, Variable regime may not be immunogenic, and the constant regime takes a large part of the drug. As a result, only a small portion of antibodies are actually anti-idiotype. Moreover, we also need to consider the desired types of anti-ID for different application and antibody pairing for sandwich ELISA. For the immunogenicity issue, we may conjugate carrier proteins such as the KRH or BSA to enhance the immune response for smaller drugs like single chain of free or nanobody. Alternatively, we can use the FAB fragments as immunogen to reduce the FC specific antibody. In addition, different adjuvants, animal strains, and immunization schedules can also be included for maximum success rate. 
Regarding the issue of a low percentage of anti-ID during monoclonal campaign, we will use a high throughput screening to increase the scale and use higher coating concentration of isotype control to exclude FC-specific antibodies. Typically, at least two runs of ELISA-based screening will be carried out to select the, the both positive against the target drug, but negative towards the isotype control. For polyclonal purification, we also need a better solution to deal with the issue of low percentage of anti-ID in the serum. Typically, we will first purify the serum with drug IgG through affinity column, and then do the cross-absorption with total human IgG. At this point, we will test the titers of a purified antibodies against drug IgG and an isotype control to determine whether it needs a further cross-absorption with isotype IgG. If your drug comes with IgG2 or IgG4, you may need to consider doing this extra step. In addition, we also recommend to optimize the selection of anti-ID based on the requirement of a final application through a bunch of assays including affinity ranking, Epto binning, antibody pairing, and antigen blocking. To obtain high affinity anti idiotype monoclonal antibody, affinity ranking can be achieved by a simple ELISA based EC50 test, which is relatively cheaper, or through SPR based off rate comparison. In order to obtain different types of anti-ID monoclonal antibody, we can differentiate them by competitive or blocking ELISA. In this assay, drug IgG will be coded on the plate, followed by incubation of anti-ID antibody and a drug target antigen. The goal is to determine whether anti-ID is able to inhibit the association between the drug and its target antigen. In order to screen for antibody pairing for PK study, we will first perform aptobinning to identify anti-ID MABs with different aptobes. Aptobinning can be achieved by ELISA or SPR. In the ELISA format, every two different anti-ID monoclonal antibody are incubated with coded drug for binding competition. Decreasing signal implies competition due to same or close epto. In the BioCore or octet format, drug IgG is first saturated with one of the anti-ID and followed by the addition of a secondary anti-ID. More binding signals suggest different epitopes. Once obtaining anti-ID with different epitopes, 70 ELISA will be performed to identify antibody pairs. In the 70 ELISA, one of the anti-ID is coded on the plate as a capture antibody, and the other anti-ID is used as a detection antibody. Successful pairing will form a complex with the drug IgG in between. Besides the antibody generation part, the assay development also comes with its own challenges. To improve the success rate, it is commonly recommended to perform a pilot antibody pairing and initial sensitivity determination to select the best pair of anti-ID for the downstream assay development. In addition, assay optimization with stringent QC standard and assay validation with actual testing samples will also help to minimize the risk. This is a sample data from assay feasibility study. First of all, five candidates were performed with pairing in the format of checkboard ELISA. After obtaining possible pairs, as highlighted in yellow here, further standard curves is established to determine the sensitivity and linearity, which can help us to select the best performing pairs for assay development. 
just to summarize what we have talked about, Anti-ID is a must-have tools for therapeutic antibody development. And the timing of anti-ID generation needs to be coordinated with the CMC process. And the detail specifics of anti-ID is determined by the drug target, the requirements of sensitivity, and the final application. Thank you all for your attention. Now we're ready for questions.